Good morning from a campground in Oschwensum, Poland, nearby the former German Nazi concentration and extermination camp called Auschwitz. I think it's safe to say that this is a solemn and sacred site. Uh, there are some rules to be respectful. Uh, no large bags, no animals. So we decided to take separate tours today. So Rebecca and I will have our own unique experiences. And we opted to stay at a campground that Google says is a uh, 21 minute walk away from the meeting point for my tour at the museum and visitor center. 1.67 million people visited the Auschwitz-Birkenau Museum in 2023, and tour reservations need to be arranged prior to arrival. And just a reminder, this is when the extremely disturbing content starts. Respectfully, do what you need to do. Auschwitz was the largest of Hitler's concentration and extermination camps. With over 1.1 million murders in just a handful of years, it was essentially a human killing factory and slave labor camp. To honor victims and educate future generations, the grounds have been preserved and a museum built. The prisoners entered camp through an infamous gate with the words Arbeit mach frei, a German phrase meaning work makes one free. For some prisoners, there was actually hope of being set free, and in the early years, political and educational prisoners from Poland and Czech were released. Before Nazi occupation, this facility was a World War I transient camp and Polish army barracks. Towards the end, though, the only prisoners released were German criminals being recruited for the SS. The first 30 prisoners arrived to Auschwitz on May 20th of 1940. In the beginning, most were Polish and Soviet prisoners of war, but by June of 1940, mass transits were arriving regularly. At Auschwitz Camp 1, the old blocks have been turned into interpretive museum exhibits. It's hard to imagine 1.3 million humans from Nazi-occupied Europe being deported to this hell. In the case of Jews, they were initially rounded up and relocated to ghettos throughout Europe. But as the Holocaust progressed, they were rounded up once again and sent to transit camps. Giving false hope, they were encouraged to pack a suitcase, but upon arrival to Auschwitz, prisoners entered a selection process. Those healthy and fit were used as slave labor in factories and at the Auschwitz camp itself, though most were stripped of their belongings and sent down the assembly line to certain death. To give false hope once again, SS soldiers told prisoners they were going to a bathing room for disinfection. It may have looked like a massive shower room, but each gas chamber could hold two to 3,000 humans. The poison of choice was Cyclon B, which is the brand name of a cyanide-based pesticide invented by Germany in the 1920s. Soldiers dropped Cyclon B pellets through the roof vents and victims were dead within 10 to 20 minutes. To avoid unnecessary stress on the SS soldiers, prisoners called Sonderkommandos were sent into the chambers to remove the bodies and harvest anything of value from the corpses, including women's hair, jewelry, and gold teeth. In 1944, 10 to 12 kilograms of gold was being harvested monthly from the victims. The Nazis maintained extremely detailed records, and Auschwitz was the only camp where prisoners were tattooed. There was also a secondary labeling system denoting political prisoners, Jews, Roma gypsies, Soviet POWs, homosexuals, and criminals, to name a few. Nazi scientists also used women and children for medical experimentation. For those sentenced to death by a criminal court, next to Block 11 is the Death Wall where 14 to 17,000 humans were executed by firing squad. And for those who tried to escape Auschwitz, there were the gallows. I didn't get a video clip of the house, but one of the commandant's wives referred to their via with a walled garden as a paradise. She must have been blind, deaf, and lacking the sense of smell because there is no mistaking living here as a paradise. It truly was a concentration and extermination camp 
and to be standing here 80 years later is a moving experience. Our tour proceeds into the first of three gas chambers and crematoriums at Auschwitz I. And yes, I found the modern emergency fire alarm horribly ironic. In June of 1940, this chamber was originally built for executed prisoners and people who otherwise died at the camp. The Nazis were capable of burning 340 corpses a day and it remained in operation until June of 1943, when the more efficient Auschwitz II chambers were fully operational, which is where we are heading next. The bus ride to Auschwitz II Birkenau gave me time to process everything I had just taken in, and I could not comprehend how humans could follow orders to perform such atrocities. Prior to our visit, I watched a Netflix documentary called Ordinary Men. It was about the Reserve Police Battalion 101, comprised of ordinary men, such as plumbers and taxi drivers. Men too old to be on the front lines, but still capable of serving Hitler as a killing unit. The compelling part is learning these men had the right to refuse participation in the killings. And they were not killed for refusal, but reassigned to dirty, less desirable jobs, along with receiving peer pressure and ridicule. I can't help but wonder if that was the case with soldiers working at Auschwitz. The bus has arrived at Birkenau and another infamous gate, this one with train tracks leading to the new and improved gas chambers to maximize extermination efficiency. Between 1943 and 1944, four gas chambers were operated almost continuously, capable of killing around 6,000 humans per day. The prisoners selected for forced labor were housed here as well, and needless to say, their barracks were sparse and they lived a horrible existence, but they lived. The last mass transport of Jews arrived to Birkenau on October 30th of 1944. By late 1944, the Nazi war effort was crumbling on both fronts as Allied forces closed in on occupied Europe. Efforts began to hide the crimes that had taken place gas chambers and crematoria were destroyed. 58,000 Jews began a death march to the fatherland in Germany. The Fuhrer even held officers personally responsible for making sure not a single prisoner from the concentration camps falls alive into the hands of the enemy. When the Red Army liberated Auschwitz on January 27th of 1945, there were only 7,000 prisoners left. Those too sick to go on the death march. As I walk out the gates in the footsteps of only a few prisoners, my tour comes to an end. I have plenty to think about on the bus ride back, but one thing is for certain, I'm a changed person for coming here. Good morning. We are packing up and getting ready to head out of the little town near Auschwitz. Uh, we've had the night to rest, recuperate, think about our experience yesterday and thought we would share our closing thoughts with you on it. I don't want to get political, but the major thing that I took away from here was they say, come here and learn so that humanity doesn't repeat the history that exists here, the genocide that happened here. And really that just makes me sad because I can name a handful of the exact same things or very similar things, maybe not to this scale, but similar things happening all around the world right now. I hope someday humanity learns to do this instead of this. And otherwise it was overwhelming. I don't ever want to visit another one, but um, I won't say I'm glad that I saw it, but I'll stand witness to it. I'm definitely feeling mixed emotions, uh, disgust at the atrocities that happened there, but also there's a hint of anger at how horrible humans can behave and the things people will do for whatever circumstances they do them as following orders and 
it's a really hard one for me to swallow. I don't know if it's where I'm from, the time I'm living in, but I would sacrifice my own life before following those orders. And what happened in such a short time period, it literally was a killing factory, extermination, like the root of all evil was happening there. And I know there's other genocides on the planet. Heck, our continent, uh, North America, has one of the worst genocides. It just happened over 500 years or so to the uh, indigenous population there. But, oh my goodness, just the efficiency and detail and methodicism. Is methodicism a word? I think so. It, it is now in this case. <laughs> just how methodical and detailed they were. It, it showed an element of pride in something so horrific. And I guess I am glad I visited Auschwitz. It's, you know, one of those things that is going to forever change my perspective on life.